Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. Uh, my name's Andy. My channel is Finding Value. Uh, just looking at some data. Um, maybe it's coincidence, maybe it's not. I don't know. Uh, but I'll share it with everybody just to show you what I'm looking at. Uh, the 10 year yield and the price of oil are highly correlated. Uh, usually, when the 10 year yield goes up, you get money to rotate out of bonds. They rotate, sometimes it rotates out of stocks. And then that money rotates into things like uh, certain commodities, especially oil. And they're very highly correlated. When the 10 year yield goes up, uh, oil also goes up with it. So uh, we started to really take off here. Um, and, and I'll show you here on the TNX. This is the 10 year treasury note yield. This is yields. Yields are the percentages. And we started to really ramp up here uh, coming on up, but we got basically stopped June 15th. June 15th. And then we started to go down. My question is, we were ready to break out of this thing like a madman, right? We were lining this thing up to run, uh, to break this resistance level right here on yields. We, we, we rocked higher. We came back and did a small little retest. And at the same exact time that this thing was getting purchased up, and I, I think it's the Federal Reserve. I can, we'll show you some some things here. Um, that's that's when you know obviously bonds bottomed. Uh, June, let me back out. Uh, June fifteenth was right here. Uh, that's when they bottomed. They threw in and bought some more, and they started coming on up at least on a little bit to stabilize or slow down the move in yields and bonds. Uh, bonds going down in price, yields going up. And if you look at crude oil, and you and you just kind of look at this, um, and you go to June fifteenth, basically here, and then June fifteenth, sixteenth, seventeenth, eighteenth, nineteenth, and we're we're basically coming down on that yield. Now, if I were to put the ten year yield and overlay it, this is the ten year yield overlaid, and the correlation here should be quite compelling here. You can see how this all correlates quite well. It, the size of the moves may be a little bit different, but they're highly correlated if you haven't noticed. The question that I'm going to ask some people is, have we solved our problems with oil? And if we haven't solved our problems with oil and interest rates are correlated to this, well, it's going to get quite interesting soon. And what does that mean? It means yields could go even higher because they are correlated. And we're probably going to see uh, quantitative easing and quantitative tightening potentially at the same time where they start to do yield curve control. Now, June 15th was the bottom or was the turning point in the 10-year yield. And oil would have turned right before it because the big boys probably knew that this was coming. And this is the total assets purchased here. June 15th, from June 8th to June 15th, we see a pretty big move higher in this asset, total assets of the Fed. This is the factors affecting reserve balances. And it, it shot up there for 15th and the 22nd. You know, you got some, some purchasing in there of something. I don't know what. So I'm just wondering if this is all correlated where they're trying to slow the move of this thing. Because uh, if you look at commodities, they look awfully weird. Um, I'm going to go down. I'm going to go up and show you the chart of the commodities and how it looks. It just looks like we've got these you know, movements lower and it, there's like no rest, no back and forth, uh, just a straight movement. And it was June 10th. The 15th was this day here. And then we had another sell off. Now I'm not saying that this is necessarily going to continue forever and it very well could continue lower, uh, for some time. Uh, there's the pullback and maybe this is just all coincidentally correlated. I, you know, Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe it's just a coincidence that their balance sheet went up the same time that the that the interest 
rates went down as well? I don't think so, but you never know. And the 10 year yield, looking at the dailies, I mean, they were really starting to take off here. And then all of a sudden, it just got that move got thwarted pretty quickly, even though it had that momentum behind it a lot of momentum. So um, I don't think anything in the markets have necessarily been fixed uh, for a lot of these commodities. So, you know, I'm looking at all this and yeah, it's a pullback. And I know that newer investors, if you look at Twitter, you look at all these things, people go crazy based off of short-term price movements. The narrative can go from massively bullish to massively bearish depending on the price movements and the 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 size of those price movements the the the, the power or how quick they can move uh, i was looking at oh my goodness <laughs> i was looking at the uh the changes and everything move so quickly amongst everybody they, they their emotions and their opinions but the fundamentals don't change that fast guys they don't change that fast. And the housing market, it's stable. It's not bad. We are hiking interest rates in the middle of this or beginning to middle of this housing market boom. Uh, so it's very strong and it's going to be resilient, but it will soften. I, I, I don't disagree with that. And we're going to have to monitor to see how much and, and what it looks like. But we, are, we were at a very strong, what I mean strong, very low inventory very strong price movement area. Now, they may need to pump this thing, and I'm just doing thinking here. It doesn't mean it's right. I'm just throwing ideas out. So don't don't jump straight on the train saying that this is necessarily right or wrong. I'm just throwing it out there so you guys can think about things. But perhaps they do have a debt problem, and they have to stop the housing market from increasing money because they're going to be increasing the money supply to service these debts. Uh, I'm sure there's not too many buyers out there for bonds. Perhaps that's the reason this thing is starting to launch, and we are potentially having a problem in the debt market with this large move higher, and then they came in and stepped and probably bought some bonds here to slow this movement down. For them to buy these bonds, it's inflationary, and they're going to have to create money to either buy the bonds, or buy more bonds to get the interest rates to come back down. That will be inflationary, and you don't want the inflation from the housing market. So one way that they could do it is they could print money, have it be inflationary, with interest rates, trying to hold the interest rate steady or or control it to some degree, and, and kill the housing market so that money doesn't leak in. Otherwise, it'd be inflation on top of inflation, which would be highly inflationary which is maybe what we already got uh, because they were buying bonds at the same time that the housing market was going up. And you saw what the inflation rate rates were, very high. And of course, they cheat them down to 8 or 9% or whatever it is. But perhaps they have to kill the housing market so the inflation is just manageable. Uh, and that can only happen for so long because if you continue to have massive inflation in the system, uh, and the housing market, uh, remember, that's also a good inflation hedge, uh, usually, because that's where the inflation's coming from. But if they don't have a control over oil, I don't know how they're going to stop this. Because oil's the the transfer mechanism of dollars in the system and visibility of those dollars in the system through the consumer price index. So oil goes up, and then it works its way into uh, the consumer price index is oil is the number one commodity. So I could understand the regime uh, wanting to go to renewable energy so badly, irrespective if it's good or bad, because what they're trying to do is de-link the oil markets from, they're, they're, they're trying to unhedge the oil markets from being that, I'll put it this way, the oil markets and the price of oil is between them and their power. Uh, their power is gained through the currency and the release of that currency. Uh, that's where they get their control. Their power uh, is all from that currency. And what stops them from, I'll say, misbehaving is the realities of oil in the markets. Uh, oil is a number one commodity. It transfers all of that inflation into 
uh, the consumer price index, and that's where it could be seen. That's the game that they set up. Now, if they could drastically reduce oil consumption, uh, it, it, do, it has some positives. What it does is it puts them in further control of money printing and the control over inflation. Uh, so there's a high, a high degree of, of, of motive behind coming out with renewables or something, uh, another alternative plan than using oil. Uh, oil is out of their control because obviously it's traded on the open exchange in the world and we are not the w one of the leaders or we don't have con total control over the price of oil. So I think things are going to get really nasty here uh, in terms of volatility going back and forth. Um, or maybe it won't. Maybe they're going to try to hold this interest rate at some point here in this general vicinity. Uh, last time in 2018, we had problems when it hit this this time, and they did QE right after in like, I think it was 2018, 2019, late 2018, I think, if I can remember right. Uh, and that's basically this last time we hit this, this pattern or the uh, resistance line going across here. Uh, it was right here in 2018, November of 2018. I think they had a problem, then they did QE to bring it back down. Uh, we're back at that point. Uh, so last time, I, I think they had problems here. This time, I think we're probably going to have problems here. And they're probably going to come out and start buying stuff. Kiwi. And they're, they're going to do some weird thing, probably. I don't know. I'm just kind of guessing, guys. I'm just throwing out ideas. Doesn't mean it's necessarily... I'm not, it's not predictions that I'm doing. It's just, you know, ideas. But if they don't get the price of oil under control, and why do you think they're releasing so much from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve? They're, they're trying. They're trying to hold that down. Rates are st we're starting to spike uncontrollably. All of a sudden, their Fed's balance sheet starts blowing up again. Huh. Interesting, isn't it? So uh, just something to look at. Uh, keep, you know, keep your mind uh, open to these ideas and, and thoughts, and we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. And I'm staying long commodities. I think the problems are not resolved in the system. I think they're getting worse. And we're seeing some oil uh, experts coming out, you know, CEOs of Chevron and uh, some of the Middle East um, ministers and stuff. And they're saying, look, we don't, we, we can't bring new oil on, not in the quantities that are going to satisfy anything. And they're talking about, you know, maybe bringing on a million barrels of oil by 2027 or something. It's, it's something ridiculous. So there's going to be a large time frame where the squeeze is on. And what they're trying to do in my opinion, is get the squeeze on as far as hard as they can uh, to to squeeze out the housing market so money stops flowing into the system. And they know that this problem probably exists in in energy. And energy has been blowing up inflation rates all over the world. We see it in Germany. We see it in all these European countries. Uh, it's getting pretty bad. So energy is the feedstock for all of these things, and we have a problem in energy. It hasn't been solved. And I'm starting to see funky things go all in the background. So uh, we'll see what happens here. I'm staying long on everything. Uh, I don't really, there's no reason for me to sell out because I wouldn't know what to go into next. Uh, I'd go right back into the same stuff that I'm in. So there's no point in me really doing anything. So yeah, I'm just sticking the course, guys. Uh, you know, just wanted to bring, so, uh, bring up some ideas. Uh, maybe you agree or disagree. Put it in the comment section what you guys think uh, and what I've noticed here. And uh, again, guys, if you want to join the the website, it's down in the description link below, Platinum Membership. Uh, if you want, uh, we are doing a question and answer session Sunday, uh, Mountain Standard Time at 7 a.m. and 5 p.m., hour and a half long uh, sessions. Uh, so if you want to ask some questions and whatnot, you can ask me there. Uh, and again, this isn't, I'm not talking from, you know, that this is absolutes. I'm just talking about ideas. That's all. All right, guys, I will catch you next time. This is Finding Value.